What would your life look like if every action you took was action that was authentic and meaningful to you? What could you build over the course of a year, two years, three years, a decade, if you lived a life of meaning? And not just meaning on other people's standards, but meaning in terms of what is authentically meaningful to you. In this episode, we are getting into part three of our five-part series of the Intentions and Delusions. And today, we're going to be talking about discipline versus expediency. Now, before we get into it, I want to share a little story. There was once a student who was really passionate about mastering the martial arts. So the student went to his martial arts master and said, Master, I would like to engage in the training. How long will it take me to become a master? The master paused. He looked at the student and he said, It'll take you 10 years. And then the student said, okay, and, and what if I train really hard and I come here twice as much and I spend twice as much time training than all the other students here? And the master said, 20 years. Now, discipline versus expediency comes down to the fundamental experience of doing. Discipline is a way of doing. Expediency is a way of not doing. Another way to understand discipline versus expediency is to understand that discipline prioritizes what is truly meaningful to you, whereas expediency prioritizes what is gratifying to you in the moment. So instant gratifications or actions that are guided by instant gratification are often guided by the delusion of expediency. Now, I think this is a really important time to discuss this point regarding intentions and delusions. The reason why they're called delusions is because delusions are ways of disengaging with life that actually do create short-term wins. The reason why they're delusions and the reason why they're so compelling and attractive to people to get into, because delusions actually do create reward. Delusions actually do give you short-term wins. When people want to make a quick buck and they engage in expediency as a way of not doing the work that is required to create something meaningful, they can make quick money. When a person wants to just go and get the high paying job instead of finding the job that really fulfills them, they're engaging in expediency. They're not actually wanting to do the process of getting the job that actually fulfills them. And instead, they're engaging in a form of being that is driven by instant gratification as a way of not doing the work. So it's important to understand that the reason why they're even called delusions to begin with is because they are actually very compelling and they incentivize us to go off of our path. And the thing is, with delusions, you can have these short-term wins. You can make the quick buck. You can get that person to like you even though they're maybe not good for you long-term. You can do all of those things. You can get the short-term wins and the instant gratification. But over a long enough period of time, delusions take us away from ourselves. They take us out of the experience of life. They cause us to live in an abstraction or a concept of life versus actually living our lives. It's like Bruce Lee would say, life is better lived than conceptualized. And when we engage in delusions, we're engaging in concepts of how we think life should be, or we're trying to get ahead of things. We're trying to accelerate our growth. We're trying to you know, get one up on reality or the universe. And that's why delusions are so powerful in the way that they are. That's why it's so tempting to engage in something like expediency for a short-term gratification. So when we think about these two, Discipline being a way of doing, and discipline focuses on what is truly meaningful. One of my favorite definitions of discipline came from Mark Devine, where he talked about, in The Unbeatable Mind, how discipline is about being a student of something bigger than yourself. When you are a disciple of something bigger than yourself, you are engaging in discipline. And something that is bigger than yourself, the way that we might define that, is an idea a calling that doesn't just benefit you now in terms of your short-term whims, which is what expediency would do, but it also benefits you long-term. It's something that you can build on. Discipline also looks at not just what is going to benefit you over the long period of time, but what is going to expand beyond you that you're doing. In other words, how are these actions that you're taking going to actually even affect other people around you? How many other people are they going to affect? When you think about the ripple of you doing meaningful action, you taking action on things that are truly important to you, the effect doesn't just affect you. It doesn't just positively benefit you, but it actually expands and ripples out to other people as well. 
Because when you do what is meaningful to you, you generate energy within yourself. You become a more magnetic and attractive human being in the grand scheme of things. And you're able to better influence and inspire others to do what also allows them to feel meaningful. There's a great quote by Howard Thurman that says, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive because what the world needs is more people who are alive. Now, why is this important? Because doing what is meaningful to us is what makes us feel alive. A lot of people have this misconception of discipline that in order to be disciplined, sometimes we have to do things that we don't want to do. And I'm here to tell you that that is not true. We do not have to do things that we don't want to do. Many people will say you should do something. And anytime we engage in that language of should, we're not actually doing what's meaningful to us. If we feel like we should do something, we're not engaging in something that is truly authentically important to us. Now, this is really important because if you think about the previous intention of understanding, anytime you say to yourself, I should do something, it is a good opportunity to use the intention of understanding and question that assumption. Is that really true? Can I know that is true? And then maybe ask yourself, what is it that I can do that actually allows me to feel alive? And then pursue that. On the topic of discipline, I think it's also really important to bring up the Japanese ideal of what is called ikigai. Now, ikigai is a Japanese word that means one's reason for being, or in other words, your life purpose. And ikigai is a four-part Venn diagram that combines multiple things. Now, in order to truly understand the intention of discipline and how it functions in your life, it is important to understand ikigai. So ikigai is the intersection of what you love, what you're good at, what you can be paid for, and what the world needs. Why is this important when it comes to discipline? Because most of the time when somebody sees this, they actually end up engaging in expediency. The reason being is because they'll look at all four questions and they'll just ask themselves, what can I do that, that fits into all four? And that typically creates a sense of overwhelm with somebody. And the reason why it creates a sense of overwhelm is because your conscious mind is only designed to focus on one thing at a time. So if you try to ask yourself four questions all at the same time, you're going to experience a sense of overwhelm and stress. So then when somebody experiences that, then they might default to one of the questions. Now, a lot of people might start asking themselves the question, okay, well, what can I be paid for? And this is where you get the expedient decision to go for the highest paying job. Now, the problem with this is that, yes, short term, it's going to make you money. Short term, you're going to be experiencing a dopamine high from making more money than you probably thought you could by going for the highest paying job that's available for you. But the problem with that is oftentimes what ends up happening if that's our focus, we end up climbing the wrong mountain. And then when we get to the top of the mountain, we look around and we say, shit, I climbed the wrong mountain. And so then you try to climb another mountain. And if you go with the same mentality, that same expediency of I just need to get paid more, then that's going to happen again. Not everything that we're good at makes us feel alive. Sometimes we've learned skills because we had to, because our parents or our teachers told us that we needed to. Sometimes we just naturally pick them up, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're actually being fulfilled by them. It doesn't actually mean that that thing that we're doing is meaningful to us. A, a good example of this is you sometimes see people who are athletes from the moment that they're kids, from the moment they're like four years old. I remember seeing this all the time when I used to wrestle in high school, is that you'd see certain kids who started wrestling when they were four because their parents made them, and then they actually hate wrestling. So they go in there, they're really good, they beat everybody, but they're never fulfilled by it. They never feel inspired to practice or to, to get even better than they are. They don't feel inspired to go and do better things because they actually don't like what they're doing. And so if we ask ourselves the question, well, what am I good at? Then that is defaulting to almost like a, uh, a people pleasing response in the sense that if you're asking yourself, what am I good at? You're asking yourself, what can I get approval for? What will people validate me for? And if you look back and you have these skills, then maybe you default to the skills that you're good at, but do those necessarily make you feel alive? And the answer could be no. So then the next question, and some people who are really outwardly focused or altruistic might ask themselves, well, what does the world need? The world has almost 8 billion people, and there are an unlimited amount of things that people could possibly need. So if you go down that rabbit hole and you just try to serve everybody all at the same time, you end up trying to serve from an empty cup because you yourself are not filled up by what it is that you're doing. 
you yourself don't have the emotional prosperity within yourself or the emotional energy to continue serving from an empty cup. And when people serve from an empty cup, they end up going into this survival response. And oftentimes the reason why somebody is going to just go and ask themselves, what does the world need? And just try to go to all the different causes or charities or altruistic work that they can possibly think of is mainly because they may have adopted a narrative that I have to focus on other people and that I'll feel good by focusing on others. And that's not necessarily the case all the time. And so then it comes down to that last question, which is, what do I love? And when we ask ourselves, what do I love? That's when we're asking ourselves a question that is oriented around meaning, that is oriented around actions of discipline, of doing what is truly meaningful to us. There's a great book that I love on the topic of productivity, and it's more so a mindset around productivity that I use, which is the book Essentialism by Greg McEwen. Now, the reason why I love this book is because essentialism is about doing less but better. It's about doing the things that you really love, doing the things that make you come alive, and doing the things that allow you to operate at your highest level of contribution and fulfillment in the world. And when you start with the question, what do I love, and you take actions that are guided by that, then life starts to really open up and expand for you. If you think about a great example of this is Michael Jordan. Now, Michael Jordan, we can say, is a disciplined individual, right? One of the greatest athletes of all time, one of the most important icons of the century. And he began with that question, what do I love? How do I know? Because if you think about his whole track in basketball, he was originally not as good as he needed to be, or he wasn't as tall as he needed to be in order to play on his high school varsity team. So he got cut when he was in the ninth grade. He went, he practiced because he loved the game. And so then he got onto his high school teams. Then he was really good and he got scouted by different colleges and he got scholarships. So he started with what he loved. Then he got really good at it. And then he was able to start getting paid for it. And so when he was able to start getting paid for it as a professional, he started sweeping the nation with the way that he played on the court and started inspiring people. And he gave people a sense of inspiration. And some people might look at a pro athlete and be like, well, the world doesn't need more pro athletes who are paid, you know, millions of dollars. But the truth is, is that Michael Jordan created inspiration for millions of people all around the world. And he created that by the way that he played, by the way that he focused and the way that he inspired people and the way that he came alive when he was on the court. It gave other people permission who were watching him to come alive within themselves. And he inspired countless people as a way of doing so by becoming that icon. So when you think about discipline, being a student of something bigger than yourself, being a disciple of something bigger than yourself, you begin with what you love. You begin with what makes you feel alive. Because when you actually love something, you will want to take the action instead of wanting to avoid or cut corners. If you look at anybody who's trying to get rich quick or trying to just you know biohack their way through life in order to be the most optimal state, oftentimes what's happening is they're trying not to do. They're trying not to engage with their life. So if we attempt to do all these things that allow us to cut corners or do things quicker, that's not necessarily going to make us get, give us that sensation of what is meaningful. It might give us the short-term gratifying dopamine hit, but it's not going to give us a sense of life that is rich with meaning and fulfillment. And so with regard to this intention and delusion set, we want to look at this as a way of making sure that we're doing the things in life that we truly want. If we think about this from just a human perspective, we live in a physical reality, right? We physically incarnated into this reality. And part of the experience of being here on earth is to be able to take action. And there's a lot of people in the spiritual crowd and the new age movement that they want to talk about ascension and, you know, getting back to their soul essence, which is all well and good, except it actually is also a denial of the doing. And so if we're using anything as a way of not doing, then we're engaging in expediency. So for instance, if instead of doing what we want to do, we sit there and we wallow in our feelings, then we're using feeling instead of doing. If we sit there and we try to ruminate and talk and philosophize about our problem and we're splitting hairs about you know all the different things that we could be doing or that we should be doing, then we're using thinking instead of doing. If we're going out and we're just talking a big game and we're talking about all the cool things that we're going to do and we never take action on them, then we're using expressing instead of doing. You ever met anybody like that who just talks a big game but they don't actually do? I have. 
that was me for the first few years of my actual coaching career. I would talk a big game, but I wouldn't actually do until I realized the importance of actually doing what is meaningful and that I loved. And if once again, you decide to meditate instead of doing, like let's say you have a work project or you have an exercise you need to do, or you have you know a business idea that you want to cultivate and you spend you know, an hour meditating to get ready to work, then you're being instead of doing. Nothing wrong with starting the day with meditation, but if you're doing it as a way, if you're engaging in meditation in a sense of beingness as a way of not doing, then you're engaging in expediency. It is the cutting of corners. It is the attempt to not do. One amazing example of this is if you've ever watched the show Botched, where they basically go and fix plastic surgeries gone wrong, you see certain people on the show. Some people are fixing plastic surgeries from accidents that they've had, but there are other people who are just trying to be picture perfect in what they they believe that that to be. And so there are even people on there who get muscle implants instead of going to the gym. So they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on plastic surgery to get muscle implants all as a way of not doing, all as a way of not working out. And so anytime we try to engage in not doing, we're engaging in that expediency. And so to recap on this, discipline is prioritizing meaning over gratification. Meaning is, does it benefit me now as well as in the future? And does it benefit me and people around me? The farther out that those two answers go, the deeper the meaning is going to feel for you. And it doesn't mean it needs to go out to, to infinity, but you want to do what is truly meaningful to you, what is in alignment with you, what feels authentically important and fulfilling. And that is how we engage in discipline. Whereas expediency is engaging in what is gratifying now as a way of not doing. Another way that I like to describe this is if you wanted to bake a cake and the steps on or the directions for, for baking that cake said, set the oven to 350 degrees and bake for 30 minutes. And you thought to yourself, I know I'll put the oven to 500 degrees and bake it for 10 minutes. It's like, that's not going to make your cake any better. It's probably going to burn your cake because even that, even trying to do things faster is a way of not doing even a person who is working out and, you know, uh, in the gym every day for two hours a day and doesn't let themselves rest is still engaging in expediency because one of those ingredients for maybe the goals that they want to have is not just being in the gym, lifting weights. It's also the rest, the recovery, the eating, the taking time to stretch and engage in mobility. And if a person's just doing all the things because they think it's going to get them there faster and they miss key ingredients like resting and eating and recovering when it comes to working out, that would be expediency as well. And so give yourself the opportunity to do what is genuinely meaningful to you. And in the next episode, in part four of our series, we're going to be going into sincerity versus performance. This is how you live a life that is authentic to you and rich in meaning by expressing what is alive within you. All of these intentions work together in unison. When we are truly intentional and present, we are engaging in all five. And so in the next episode, we'll be talking about sincerity versus performance so that you're living a life that is truly your own.